What's up guys, Otsa Martin, your NFJ lawyer. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about self-development and strategic advice to create a life on your terms. In today's video, I am going to cover the four emotions that we guarantee you to make a first amazing impression every single time, even for introverts. And I'm going to walk you through these four emotions one by one taking examples from very good first impression people such as Oprah Winfrey and Emilia Clark. Before we dive in, I want to remind you that if you want to feel more empowered in your life, please download the free ebook which will help you focus on what you can control in your environment, which is always a good place to start. You will find the link in the description below. I would like to give a little bit of a disclaimer here. The strategies I'm about to share with you are very effective, but they're not intended to be used as manipulation tools. And at the end of the day, anything that works long term comes from a place of integrity and authenticity. This video is intended at really helping you improve your communication skills and showing the best version of yourself. Because first impressions are really, really important. And it does not matter how smart, how witty, how funny you are. If you can't get people's attention when you first met them, or worse, give them the wrong impression, you may not have a second chance. But here's the thing. First impression are just that, impression. And you don't actually need hours to build a connection. People click through emotion. And it is really important to realize that they will remember you based on how they felt while they were interacting with you. As introverts, we can feel awkward in social gathering and we will be found rather nursing our drinks in a corner of the room. And we can also be quite good at perceiving others' emotion, which is a massive advantage for making a first good impression. So if we can pass the first stress and actually make an awesome first impression, and that's why I want you to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it. It's just a matter of technique. I'm going to walk you through the four emotions in a way that will help you put the stress away. So you're going to kill it every time with a little bit of practice, of course. The first emotion is a sense of fun. Connecting with somebody with a sense of fun, wittiness even, create lightness in the interaction. And if somebody can walk away from you having smiled, having their day brightened, they will associate you with a very positive memory and remember you as just the one who makes them smile, which will help you stand out from other people or from whatever happened in the day of this person. No panic here. It's not about cracking jokes all over the place, pushing yourself too hard to act as a, the extrovert you're not. It's really about bringing a good vibe into the interaction. So just start by smiling. And another important detail is to look at the person in, in the eyes as if you were to notice the eye color. This is a little trick actually to avoid looking sideways, which can create discomfort or even appear as being arrogant. So as I was saying, vibes are contagious and we know that whether they're positive or negative. And the idea is to bring and enthusiasm a level up in the interaction from what the person is showing to you so that actually you create energy that will raise the, the vibration and make them totally open towards you. The easiest and most natural way to achieve that is to tap in these aspects of yourself that is dialed up front and center. For me, it's my intuitive nature. I will naturally quite easily bring the conversation towards the other person's dream, emotions and passions. But with you, it could be your empathy. Or it could be your uh, inner quirky artist. Let me give you an example with uh, Emilia Clark from Game of Thrones because I think she is really good at bringing this sense of fun and lightness in the interaction when she meets somebody. Emilia Clark from Game of Thrones displays something you cannot help but notice, and it is her beaming and freaking smile. She really does smile from the eye, which truly makes her endearing and friendly, and she manages to light up any interaction she's involved in. She also raises the energy, and even if it's not immediately noticeable, this is an extremely powerful habit. In this next clip, you're going to see how an enthusiasm is one level above the other person, making her effortlessly dominating the interaction. Good to see you again. Lovely to see you as well. Okay. Is it frustrating at all that you can't talk about it? Yeah, deeply. I can't wait for this to be out. I'm just going to say it. I know it. You, yeah, people that's... can have like emotional connections to their scene partners. I really do. It's I, genuinely. If you manage to be one level sillier than the situation calls for people 
almost appreciate it always. And I know that for an introvert, it might seem a bit daunting as we would rather blend in. But if you're not convinced, it can make a massive difference. Listen to the producers of Game of Thrones telling about how Emilia won the role of Daenerys. Also, she had only acted in a few minor roles. It was quite possibly the least inviting audition environment we had ever witnessed. Still, the president of the company was playing it close to the chest. He nodded. Emilia asked if there was anything else she could do to lighten the mood. David asked, can you dance? And without missing a beat, Emilia did the robot. <laughs> and even the president had no choice but to smile. She got the job 10 seconds after she left the room and the two of us ran to tell her. The point here is don't try to fit into normal. Have a little fun, show a little enthusiasm, and it can go a really long way. The second emotion is trust. And something I forgot to tell you at the beginning of this video is that it is very important to connect with those four emotions but using them in the right order. And where people often get it wrong is with the uh, third emotion. But let's get back to the second. So people can be really happy to see you and feel good about connecting with you. But if they don't trust you, then it is going to be very difficult to get past the uh, first impression. And to deepen any interaction, people need to feel safe and trust your motives. You may literally prepare the setting for better trust and connection. For example, in my practice as a lawyer, and as much as possible, I was trying to sit on the side with my client rather than in front of them. And I actually learned that from my Japanese client because it feels less imposing, confrontational and intimidating. With a date, you're more likely to build a spark if you sit adjacent rather than with a table across. Being side by side or slightly sideways allows you to have the same points of venture on your surroundings and environment from the other person, which helps build trust. Light and appropriate touches can also really help building trust with people. Let's have a look at Oprah. And here, obviously, you need to be careful to have the appropriate one. But Oprah naturally uses contact easily in a very friendly and warm way. Another good connecting hack to build trust is verbal and body mirroring, where you're using the same words, position and expression as the other person. Let's say that somebody is talking to you and telling you how dreadful was her evening, for example. Ask her the question, why your evening was dreadful, rather than was your evening not so good? These are very little and easy tricks that will help you build connection and rapport on a subconscious level and prove extremely uh, effective when you first meet somebody. Respect is the third emotion and this is where often people get it wrong. Uh, they have a tendency to start any interaction by explaining all about their interesting job and their successful company. And when you start to connect with people, you really don't want to be in their face by explaining all your achievements. Doing so could be interpreted as arrogance, of course, trying too hard and even smells of insecurity, which is the worst turn off for a first impression. And I get it. People often need to prove that they are the right person for the job, the right person to meet. But allow first the other's person emotion to take place. When the person is in the right place with a sense of fun and by building trust, then you can start explaining a little bit about yourself. The best way of creating respect that doesn't require to be a Fortune 500 on owning a, a private jet company is setting boundaries. This is quite counterintuitive as most people will aim for harmony, especially in the context of first impression. And the situation does not always call for setting boundaries. But when it does, this can create massive respect. A situation where I was with a client first meeting and he had a very precise idea of what he wanted me to put in his case and I was of a different opinion and as he was trying to be very controlling and quite adamant about it I simply let him know that's fine this is your opinion but this is not mine I have a certain way I want to handle this file I explain it a little bit but if this doesn't suit you then you may go and see somebody else and eventually he stayed with me. And that kind of thing not only uh, created respect, of course, but created trust. Just a word about setting boundaries. When somebody goes a little bit too far in the first interaction, this is not about shouting back at the other person. It's very important to just make your point and then stay quiet and leave the other person react the way she wants to react because you don't have any control about it. 
focusing on social skills and the interaction in a moment rather than a status will likely attract you much more respect than anything else. Force emotion, show interest. The other things that people get often wrong is to show immediate interest with somebody they've never met before. Let's say that you want to connect with a very attractive guy or girl or somebody with high status. Showing them a lot of interest right away will not distinguish you from the rest of the crowd and chances as you're going to be perceived as having the same agenda as everybody else. There are two aspects to the equation. It's about showing interest at the right moment and if you have already connected with the person with the three first emotions, you are already in a category of your own. So that when you do show interest, they will be open and willing to connect with you. The second aspect is of course showing genuine interest. Think about it. If somebody shows immediate interest without any form of previous interaction whatsoever, does it sound completely natural? I wouldn't think not. And you're really entitled to question the motivation of their sudden interest. There is nothing more obvious than fake interest. This is also about having the right body language and level of intention. Let's go through a few examples with Oprah Winfrey, which is really good at showing interest to her guests. Oprah is very comfortable with prolonged eye contact. And when she's keeping eye contact with Steven Spielberg, she shows him he does truly have her full attention. Also, by focusing on a person, you actually prevent your brain from wandering around and stay present in the interaction and in a moment. Showing interest is actually a great tip for introverts as we prefer taking the focus away from us. But you may have to dose your eye contact according to the person's own reaction and personal space. On the receiving side, getting someone's authentic and full attention feels great. One thing Oprah does with her guests is calling them on their commonalities. I was so thrilled to realize, you know how you and I are most alike? Let me guess, you're an introvert. I'm an <laughs> introvert! I knew it. I, you knew you... it? Once you have started to demonstrate interest and connect with someone, we all know that finding commonalities with the person gets you even more in sync. In his book Influence, Robert Cialdini explains how feeling similar with someone is one of the six most powerful factors of influence. And the best way to tell if you are in sync with somebody is to be able to finish each other's sentences. Yeah. I've been at parties where I have to get up and leave. Take a and break. I'm just in the bathroom. Recharge. Yeah. Recharge. I love the bathroom. L love it. Love to hide in the bathroom. Love to hide in the bathroom. She gets energy from people. She right. feeds, feeds off it. She feeds and off it. And we get sucked dry. And I, and I get sucked yeah. dry. Yeah, you need yeah. to be taken out of a party in a stretcher. Yes. I love this interaction. I feel exactly the same. For me, escaping in the bathroom is a bit like uh, the highlight of the party. But again, making a first good impression through finding commonalities only works if it's genuine. Fake or pretend commonalities will eventually appear for what they are and ruin the connection. And if you differ on some points with the person, it is better to agree to disagree and it is more likely to build trust than uh, pretend commonalities. The charismatic person, the one who makes a great first impression, is in the end the one who is comfortable with the truth. People will remember you not so much about what you said but according to how you made them feel. As human beings we are emotional creatures and we mostly connect through nonverbal communication and feelings. My fellow introverts, empaths and INFJs, you are gifted with the ability to feel other people's emotions and sometimes at the detriment of your own. And my wish is to help you use this gift in a way that is mutually beneficial to you and to the people you connect with. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this video was helpful. Do not hesitate to leave a comment and let me know what you got out of it. And if you like it, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so you receive notification for the next video. Until next time, stay true and safe. Bye.